Your timing is perfect. You're just right on time. You're fine. All right. I'd go ahead and like to call to order the meeting of the Home Rule Charter Review Commission. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and begin by uh, doing a quick roll call. Um, if you're here, just let me know. Uh, Shane Cheatham. Present. Uh, Preston Friedley. I'm here. Uh, Lee Jeter. Present. David Johnson. Here. Sandra Moorhart. Here. Juliana Parks. Here. Uh, Ms. Sumas, which we know is uh, representing our community down in New Orleans uh, at some events. Uh, Vicki Whitman. Here. Uh, Lisa Wilhite. And uh, then our ex officio members are present Amanda Nottingham and Richard Ray. Uh, if we could begin our meeting, I'd like to ask David Johnson this time if he would like to uh, give an invocation for us at the beginning of our meeting. Lord, we give you thanks for us being here tonight gathered in, in behalf of the citizens of Bossier City. We just ask that you would continue to guide and keep this committee on point and representing the people. We ask that you'd guide each and every one of us on, the, on our journey home and just continue to bless this committee as we go through this 18-month process. We just ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to ask Ms. Whitman if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right. Um, I think everyone on the Charter Commission uh, has been uh, given a copy of the agenda. So what I'd like to do is, um, uh, before we approve the agenda, uh, in a motion to see if there's any public comment regarding the agenda, we did make a few copies available to the general public as they come in, uh, plus um, every commission member, I think, also has a copy of the agenda. So. Um, after any public comment, any m comments by members of the commission? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the agenda for today's meeting. All right. I have a motion that uh, we approve the agenda for today's meeting. Second. I have a second by Mr. Jeter. All those please signify by a raised hand for the approval of the agenda as presented. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, it is unanimous. The next uh, item number five is the uh, approval of the minutes. Again, I think a draft of the minutes were uh, distributed, plus then the uh, final copy of the minutes have now been uh, presented to members of the commission. And again, I put a copy of the, uh, a few copies of the minutes for anyone in the general public that would like to have them, they're out there by um, one of the marshals uh, who's out there at the front desk. So I'd like to see if there's any public comment regarding the minutes that have been presented. Yes, ma'am? The that we have is February the 2nd. We don't have an update. Uh, the, the, the agenda says that it's posted on February the 2nd, which is the legal requirement for the meeting that takes place on the 5th. No problem. I'm glad that it always confuses me because I look down and see it saying February 2nd. So thank you for the public comment. Hopefully that's a good clarification for anybody. So do we have a motion to approve? Uh, first of all, any comments then I know from the public, any comments for regarding the uh, commission members regarding the minutes? Mr. Friedley, uh, Mr. Jeter has given me several updates that I need to make on those just clarifications and a, a couple of changes spelled. a couple of technical changes I know I think Ms. Sumas name was not spelled correctly and yes that is correct there's a couple minor changes to the minutes so I would make a motion that they be approved with the necessary corrections to the minutes as presented second all right motion by Mr. Jeter seconded uh, by Mr. Cheatham uh, I'll go ahead and say are there any public comments regarding those minutes after the changes will be made. 
they'll be made as part of our record. Any comments from members of the commission? All right. Hearing that, we have a motion and a second on the table. All those in favor of uh, the minutes uh, from the last meeting, please be approved. Please signify by a raised hand. Anyone opposed to it? I I'm going to abstain just because I wasn't here, so I don't know. All right. <laughs> One abstention. No, no, I, I appreciate that very much. All right. And, and that's funny. That's our own legal person on the committee. See, see him? She must know her business, huh? I don't know if that's right. <laughs> Julianne, we appreciate it. All right, we're now item six, and under item six, we have number one, schedule future meetings and town hall meetings. Now, at the last meeting, we talked about having possibly three or maybe four meetings, um, and we talked about our specific meetings being different than the possible town hall meetings. So we have the meeting today. We then have the commission meeting that would occur at one o'clock on February the 12th. And then, excuse me, Mr. Chair, you mean 11 a.m.? 11. Uh, is it 11 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, 11 a.m., thank you. I appreciate that, it looks like uh, one, but yeah, two ones. Uh, then we have no meeting on the 19th since that's President's Day and then we will follow up with a meeting on the 26th that will again occur here at the Bossier City Council Chambers at 6 o'clock. Now is there any discussion we talked about the four days of the 20 of having town hall meetings on the 20th the 22nd the 27th and the 29th. I know between Mr. Ray, I believe you were going to check and take a look at the possibility of uh, what was available as far as the Bossier Rec, Hooter Park, and the possible BIC. Do we have a report on that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, the, and I believe Mr. Cheatham can speak on the BIC and, and also me and Mr. Cheatham both uh, checked on the Shady Grove Rec Center is available <coughs> any of those four evenings, the 20th, 22nd, 27th, or 29th. Hooter Park is available the 20th and the 27th. Okay. Do we have a recommendation? I'll look to Mr. Cheatham. Do we have a recommendation of when to possibly schedule the town hall meetings? I know at the last meeting, if I'm not mistaken, one of the charter commission members suggested that those meetings not occur until 630. So we're talking about 630 until we finish our input. So uh, Mr. Uh, Cheatham, do you have a recommendation on the town hall schedule? So I, I reached out to the Bozier Pair School Board and they were uh, very accommodating, said that we could do the 27th or the 29th at the BIC. And I also reached out to the Shady Grove Rec Center and, I th and, and uh, they were very accommodating as well. After having those conversations, I think it would be beneficial if we did Hooter Park on the 20th and then on the 22nd, we did the Shady Grove Rec Center and then on the 27th, we did uh, the Bozier Instructional Center right next to Airline High School, the old Bipsy building. Um, and that would give us our, our Central Bozier, South Bozier, and North Bozier town hall meetings. Um, I do think, I, I, I did ask the BIC, they said we could have it from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, I mean, we might not start the meetings until 6.30, but, but maybe we can have get there at 6. We should have them completed by 8, I would think. Could do that. All right, is there, um, any comment? Um, would you like to make those as far as our town hall meetings in the mo in the form of a motion? And then you can also we could have a separate motion if necessary about our regular scheduled meetings. But well, before I make a motion, I'd just like to make sure that you know those dates and locations are, are good with the other members, um, and just any conversation if if we think there needs to be a, another meeting or you know if that covers. All of the city with the with the central Bozier location, South Bozier, North Bozier, um, 
you know, if everybody's okay with that, then I'll, I'll absolutely make a motion. Well, let's do this to kind of keep it again, following Robert's rules of order the best we can. If you'll put it in the form of a motion and then I can get a second, then we can open the floor for discussion. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Uh, I would like to make a motion that the Bossier City Charter Commission has town hall uh, meetings on February 20th at Hooter Park from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. On February 22nd at the Shady Grove Rec Center from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on February 27th at the Bossier Instructional Center from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. All right. Can I get a second to that motion? Second. All right. I have a second by Ms. Whitman. All right. Now we can open it up to the floor. Any commission members that would like to discuss that? Does that seemingly that at the town hall meetings, I would like to try to keep them very open where any citizen feels like they could talk to any member of the commission if they would like. Um, we can talk about whether or not we'd like to have it even as somewhat of a formal meeting or almost a round table discussion, but it'd be different formats. Shane? Mr. Chairman, I think we'll discuss that under item new business number one. Okay. So I, I am the commissioner that, or the charter member that said 6.30. So I have a commitment on those nights until 6.30. Okay. So I would not be able to be there at six. Okay. Fine. All right. 6.30 is fine. Um, any other comments from members of the commission? Juliana, David, I want to make sure I get everybody's opportunity to have input on these scheduled meeting dates. And I, and I think if you can't be there till 6.30, I think 6 o'clock we arrive, and we'll discuss that, I guess, in our, in our new business item on how that meeting's going to go. Right. But, you know, we get there at 6, we meet with the people that have showed up, we just conversate, and then we could start, you know, at 6.30 when everyone could, could be there. Okay. I'm not going to be available for any of those because I'm going to be out until March. So if you want to proceed without all of the committee members there, okay. um, I can understand that. I feel like my district is very well rep represented by some other people in here too that can convey the wishes of the, and are these gonna be live streamed or recorded The town in halls some way? will probably not be live okay. streamed, but our commission meetings will. Okay. But not the town halls. I think we're going to, because we're looking to go out into the community, uh, we don't have the technical expertise to do that. But Right. Uh, and if anyone wants to speak with me directly, I mean, I obviously have a public cell phone number and email. And, right. And we'll answer any calls at any time. Right. I assume as a member of the police jury, you're pretty much available <laughs> to the public. I try uh, to be. Well, that would be great. All right. Um, any other comments uh, regarding those schedules that would somebody from the general public that would like to make a comment on those schedules? I know it's very aggressive, but I, I think we need to move forward as quickly as we can. All right. Any other comments from members of the commission? And now we have a motion and a second on the table. Again, all those commissioners in favor of... Uh, Following those three town hall meetings as outlined by Mr. Cheatham, please signify. Who, who was the second? The there second was uh, I did. this week. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, I believe he outlined four to 20 to 22nd to 27th and to 29th. We did, and I think we've decided at this point we'll keep the 29th uh, available if we feel like we need to have an additional meeting. Otherwise, the three, I think, we feel will cover most of the city by doing North Bossier, South Bossier, and then Central Bossier. And if we need an additional meeting, I think we can definitely be open to that. All right. So we have now a, a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, any opposed? All right. Now... I know we've covered this at every meeting, but I still think we Mr. should go. Mr. Chairman, just I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just so that the just so that the record is clear, I just wanted to note that that was unanimous. It was unanimous, yes. Thank then you. I, I'd still like to go ahead and have a motion 
because we talked about the last, even though we talked about this at the last meeting, I never think it hurts to reiterate that we're looking at having our uh, next meetings as far as when we would like as the one on the 12th that will be televised or put out on the uh, public channel, um, the 12th at 11 o'clock, and then we will go back on the 26th and have it here at 6 o'clock. So uh, I don't know if we should have a motion again to reiterate that. Is that's what well, we already passed at the last meeting that that would be our schedule. And I, if there was somebody who was opposed to that, I think our minutes reflect that that's what we we're going to schedule. All right. That brings us to if we could ahead. reschedule that February 26th one, that would I would appreciate that. And that might be a good idea because you're having all the town hall meetings anyway and. Um, Okay. We may be in a better position as a board to move forward after those have been completed, but if if you if the rest of the commission feels like it's better to proceed on the 26th, I I won't oppose that. Just an idea. Okay. Would it would if we possibly move that meeting to the 29th? Would that help you at all? I don't know your schedule. Yeah. No, I'm not going to be able to do it until till that next week. Okay. We'll look so at like the March option 4th? of whether or not we have that meeting on the 26th. That's just a, if we need it or feel like it's necessary, we can make a decision. Because we're having a meeting on the 27th, we might not necessarily need that meeting on the 26th. So I think it would be good to go ahead and, and if we could for our schedules, maybe to book out March if needed. Well, we could move to that first Monday, I assume, in March for the only meeting we'd need to put on it. In case we decided to reschedule the 26th, we could push ourselves back to March the 4th at 6 o'clock. So would that be uh, acceptable to everybody if we needed to do so? That way I know Juliana could be back. I think uh, Paterina would be back in town. So we could look at possibly doing that meeting on the 4th at 6 o'clock. Okay? March the 4th at March 6. the 4th at 6 here at... Mr. Chairman, option. I think that would be a great idea. That way we've, you know, we're going to have our meeting on the 12th, then we're going to have our three town halls, and then we can come back that first week of March and have our first meeting after getting public input and having the town halls. Okay. So we'll put that as a meeting on the March the 4th. Do we need to have a motion to that effect? Well, and I think what Ms. Moore, Moorhart was suggesting was maybe we do the entire March, month of March just for everyone's scheduling purposes. Okay. Um, I don't know what dates, if we're going to meet on March 4th, do we want to do the 4th, 11th, and 18th? Well, 18th 11th is spring break. break. Yeah. yeah. I think the 18th is but I think going to be Bozier Day. If yeah. Maybe we do the 4th, the 11th, and the 25th. So the 11th is spring break. So that's the beginning, the 11th is beginning of the week of spring break? Yes. Yeah. And this, the, uh, th that following... Monday, Tuesday is Bossier Day in Baton Rouge, so. Could we do it later in the week? Sure. Uh, like the 20th? I'm, I can't I'm not available days. on any Wednesday night, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that's, that's Baptist night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we I could. I um, teach middle schoolers at church, so that's. So, we're, so if we're looking at the 4th, are we looking at maybe, you tell me what, meetings you'd like to look at for the rest of the month what about the 21st of march okay i'm open for the if we want to have a meeting on the 21st uh, yeah i'm doing a um fundraiser for family justice center so i might be a little late getting in there we're doing i'm doing a, a big fish fry for them to help them raise some money so i can't say that i'll be prompt but and then one on the 28th, maybe? So th so on the 21st, I would not be here until 6.30. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we can, can do another 11 o'clock during the day or if um, we have to do 6 o'clock. 
we could do 11 o'clock on the 21st. Okay, I won't be here, but that's, that's. But you could do 11 on a Wednesday, right? So that doesn't interfere with church. Yeah. Can you do 11 well, on a police Wednesday? Police jury on the first and third Wednesday. Uh, it, it, it depends on what Wednesday it is. I can do it during the day, during the Wednesday, as long as it doesn't conflict with my well, the, job. Well, the, the 20th conflicts with the police jury meeting, and we don't want to do that, so. Could we do it earlier in the morning? Yeah, the early, we always have um, committee meetings before the regular meeting, and but the earliest is 10 if we wanted to do it like at 9 or 8. Okay, what's the pleasure of the commission? On the 20th? Uh, 20th at 9 a.m. in the morning? I'm, I'm good at any time on the 20th. Okay. Jim, we're asking schedules. Is that clear up with you? If it's in a leader, we'll cover it. Thank you, sir. Regardless of the time. Thank you. So that would be March 20th at 9? Mm hmm. Are you good with that, Jim? I am. Let me, let me let me clarify that statement since you asked. I prefer that all meetings be at 6 p.m. or later, so uh, I probably would not be voting for any 9 or 11 a.m. meeting, but uh, obviously uh, if y'all vote for that, I'm 100% okay with that. Okay. What about our meeting on, I'd like to look at the 27th or 28th? 27th is Wednesday, so we would lose. Late. So can we do the 28th at 6? 30? Sure. I, again, I won't be here till 6.30. Right, that's why I said we do it at 6.30. 6 yeah. Okay, but, so here, here's what I'm hearing. Let's just go over one on the 4th at 6, uh, one on the 20th at 9 a.m. in the morning, and one on the 28th at 6.30 for March. Those are our tentative dates. Is that generally acceptable to everyone? The 4th at 6, the 20th at 9, and the 28th at 6.30? Correct. Yes. For the month of March, David, you want to put that in the form of a motion for our meetings for the month of March? I can. Okay. So I make a motion that future meetings for the month of March um, is March 4th, 6 p.m., March 20th, 9 a.m., March 28th at 6.30 p.m. All right, and I have a second by David Johnson for that. David? Reluctantly, yes, I'll second right. that, but it's, you know, it's it's tough with the work schedule and, and then court, according you to what you I'm telling You need to look I'm, at retiring, David. Well, I know, but <laughs> telling telling the folks that I'll be here for them in the evening, it's it's a little tough to do that, but uh, if that's what we need to do, well, that's All what right. we'll do. All right, a motion and a second. All those in favor of the, adopting those as our meetings for the month of March, signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. 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 All right. Anyone opposed? Mr. Cheatham shows that Mr. Cheatham is the only one opposed to that schedule. All right. That brings us to new business. Uh, discussion regarding the process for receiving input from the public and possible rules for meetings and the town hall meetings. All right, I am now going to open the floor for any general discussion. Uh, I don't know if any members of the general public have some comments uh, to make on that. I know that Mr. Crockett, you. Uh, well, and Mr. Chairman, if I may. Just, go ahead, I'm sorry, Dick. There's not a reason to have public comment until you're taking some type of action on it. Right. Um, the only thing I was going to say is that I had uh, received from Mr. Crockett a, uh, a submission of a possible commission input statement, and you may want to comment on that, David. So I'd ask Mr. Crockett if you'd like to come forward and try to limit your remarks. I just listened to some of the things that y'all were talking that you need a way for people to make input, so I just designed a form is all I did. So I submitted it to him. When we get your email addresses, it's just a suggestion if y'all want to change it or anything like that. But, but if I hear things that somebody doesn't say they're going to take them on, I'm going to take my own initiative and try to save y'all some time maybe. And if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, it doesn't take me long to do things like that. But I guess in addition to that point, 
the mechanism to make inputs throughout the process is uh, going to be helpful for people personally. Um, the issues that I'm going to be interested in look having y'all consider for the charter, I'm just going to take the charter and do a line in, line out changes using track changes and word, hopefully. But, uh, but I don't know, it would be nice to hear from the public how we're going to be able to um, nominate issues other than just emailing them to you guys as uh, commissioners. And I think the other thing is, uh, I mentioned this uh, earlier, that the emails were not put out on the information that was provided so that we could write to everybody so we could start the process along. But anyway, I don't mean to. No, no, uh, thank you, David. Uh, appreciate that, Colonel Crockett. One of the things, uh, Mr. Ray, can you mention to the fact that our, is am, am I understanding that our IT people are going to set up a um, email for the Charter Commission so that in the, instead of giving out our individual personal emails, which we can welcome to do if we want, but that we would go ahead and ask that they officially send it to an email that's being set up for us by the city? Yes, that there'll be an email address. I, I don't have confirmation of it yet. I was just checking to see if I'd gotten an email, but I think there'll be an email address that the public could send and it will go to all the commissioners. Okay. And then if you want to Mr. give out Chairman. your email address, then that's... Go ahead, Shane. That's probably... Richard, you think realistically by our February 5th meeting, they could have that email... I'm sorry, our February 12th meeting have that email address and we can put that out there before we start having the town halls that way people can send that as well yes okay okay well, just, just to clarify that once we get the email so it will go to all of the commissioners personal emails it will be forwarded yes. to that and the mechanism to do that would be me or you or who's no, going to manage come into that? one email address that the city will set up. I hate to even mention what I think it'll be because I don't want to spread any confusion, but when we get it set up, it'll be put out. And then it'll be, it, it's like a distribution list and it'll go to the nine of you and Miss Nottingham and myself. Okay. And then then you'll have the information. So it's a way for the public to, to contact you and give you input. And then if you want to, if you choose to respond to that person, then you, you certainly could. So when we respond, or if we respond, would it come from that email address or our personal email address? It would come from your personal email address. Which, as I understand from last meeting, then that would bring our personal emails into public record? I think that particular email, yes. That, if, you, if you respond to, with your personal email address to a member of the public about Charter Commission, then that email not your entire email account, but that email would become a public record. That would be subject to a public records request. That, that's my opinion. Okay. Does that make sense? Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, Jeter. Mr. Chairman, so I just want to make sure for clarification, if we have an email set up for the Charter Commission, the chairman will have access to that email. He have to log on with whatever password so he won't, so how will that, I'm trying to understand how that process will work. If there's one email address, Mr. Jeter, then the public, that'll be published and the public can send an email to that email address and then it will be, that same email will be distributed to 11 people, 11 email addresses. So everyone will have the benefit of, a, of the communication from the public and then you'll have the benefit of that. And then if you want to <coughs> respond to that person or to whoever, then you can do it. But but there's not any way to set the members up with email accounts. It's, right. a, it, it's just not, it, that's not a thing that we can do with non-employees. It's part of, our, part of our security. It's just not something that we can do. So I think in the last meeting, we talked about making that a permanent agenda item and that we would review the information in summary form um, and respond as a commission Correct. together and Correct. then that way it would keep each person from emailing specific information and then keep it centralized and also discussed as a total commission member group that I think that's the best way to do that I mean Richard I mean we can 
if we get something from somebody in the general public, is to then bring that before the commission and let us discuss how we would respond to it, unless it's just something for specific information that's available that we could respond. But if it's a question about how the commission is wanting to act, then that would have to take the whole commission responding. Well, and then there'll be the town hall meetings. So that <coughs> assuming it's someone that could come to the town hall meetings, then they could they could be they could come to one or three or however many y'all have or come to a meeting here. All right. It's just another way for the public to provide input comment to you. All right. Um, also, uh, while we're still under Mr. item, Chair, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I just, I'm trying sorry, to Mr. Jeter. Go wrap ahead. my head around this. Um, it is not possible for us to create a charter commission at gmail.com as an example <coughs> email that we could have access to or the chair could have access to that. All the emails could go to that and then the chair <coughs> would consolidate <coughs> whatever came from the public that needed to be discussed needed to be added to the agenda item for discussion that's not possible and no, that, well, no I think y'all could do that if you wanted to do that that's certainly possible that would well be I think that's what day. you were talking about so mr. Ray is going to have the IT department create one email address for the Charter Commission it's going to be a at Bozier it's like a City distribution Dial. list right, right. <laughs> it's just an inbox and right. just a mailbox so it is just to and so receive. they'll be able to send to that one email and then it will go to the chair and the chair or, or it'll actually go, the, it'll go to, it'll the, go the, the IT department will send it out to all of us it's automatic it'll go out. so once an email comes into that box it's gonna come it's gonna come to all of us correct and so I think that's the same thing as you were talking about whether you create a Gmail address or whether they have a BozierCity.org one it's going to come if somebody sends an email address or an email then at that point we're all going to get a copy of it to review it if you want to email that person back you're welcome to from your email address if you want to call that person and discuss that idea with them you know you're, you're welcome to but we are going to have one centralized location that everyone and I think mr. Ray said on February 12th he would have that for us so we can start telling people when we're having conversations. If you have an idea for the Charter Commission, send it to blah, blah, blah at blah, blah, BossierCity.org. Correct. And then when they send that in, it's going to automatically route to all nine of our personal emails for us to view and, and uh, how we choose to respond is up to each individual person. If you want to email them back with more information, if you want to call them to get more information about their idea. But we are going to have one email address that they can send. Is that kind of what you were asking, Mr. Jeter? That's that's what I wanted to make sure we're, I was clear on because that was the gist of the conversation that I thought we had last yes. week about setting up that particular email. Okay. And so I may I say this? Yes. Um, I think it would be a good idea for us to form a mission statement that way as because what's fixing to happen is we're going to hit get hit with things that are not under our review and if we have a mission statement then you could simply say you know that is not within our mission statement that's not what we're about there are things that we can't do I, I know this from campaigning people talk about dogs barking too loud or for whatever that's not that's not what we're right. here to do so I think we need to define what our mission is well, and then we stick to that mission all right, well, let yeah. me let me go back okay. to our legal counsel on this one, Mr. Ray. Is did we not get a specific charge from the city when we were asked when they formed this commission and asked us to do a specific task, which I thought was to review the charter and come back with any recommendated recommendations that we think need to be made as far as changing the charter? Well. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I can look I at the you, ordinance. I know you but gave I mean, us a, a handout. A charter review commission is is to do that, is to review an existing charter and provide input as to any proposed changes. Uh, if you'll give me a minute, I can find the ordinance that established. You. <coughs> that was that October ordinance? Ordinance 154, uh, 2023. Correct. You have it handy, Ms. Cunningham? I do, yes, and that was um, passed December 5th. But in that, the ordinance um, 
creating the Charter Commission states that the mayor and council concur that the charter should be reviewed for possible changes pursuant to the amendment provisions in the charter, additionally the Louisiana Constitution of 1974, as well as a statutory, as well as statutory provisions, including Louisiana Revised Statute 33 colon 1395, provide guidance regarding charter revisions by way of a charter commission. So I think that that sort of outlines our charge, which is what we'll probably bring forth when we have our town hall meetings. Just that specific statement that this is what we are charged to do. We're not drafting ordinances or anything else, just recommendations to modifications regarding the charter. Is that okay with you? Yeah, Ms. I Remus? just think we just need to let the public know this is this is what we do, because if not, we're gonna get a hit with I totally agree with everything you. and things we can't do anything about. Right. So I think that <clears throat> again under that same item, still keeping under the discussion, Miss uh, Johnson with the Bozier Chamber, I mentioned forwarded to me some town hall layout suggestions, which was exactly that. Lay out the mission statement, clearly noting what the agenda was going to be at the meeting. Uh, if there was any educational presentations that we needed to make, or if there were any, open it up particularly for Q&A and feedback, and make sure that we knew that the general public, it was their meeting, not our meeting, that we were asking them to come and give us any information that they would like to see as far as regarding changes to the uh, commission, to the and charter. I would just remind anyone that, that contacts you regarding issues that are not in the purview of the charter commission, I would certainly encourage them to contact their council person um, and that representative so they, they can still share that, just it would be a different forum. Okay. Um, when you just talked about what Lisa Johnson provided, is that something that is in our binder or? I don't think it's in our binder. Uh, I'll be, I'm gonna send both the uh, commission input statement and a copy of, the, uh, of what she sent me. I'm gonna give that to Mr. Ray. Because okay. kind of along the same lines as what Ms. Whitman said, um, in addition, I mean, we're supposed to provide input and review the charter, but you know, what is our basis for suggesting changes? Is it simply what the public wants? Are we, do we have some sort of obligation to um, review data where these changes have been made in other places and see what the outcome is? And that kind of goes into the, <coughs> the point that, that our, our, uh, our chairman made about the educational presentations. I mean, what are we doing to educate ourselves and the public about um, the proposed changes and what the effects of those might be because we can we can predict what we think is going to happen but we should also look where the same changes have been made in other places to see um, what the results of that did it accomplish what they thought it was right. were there other unintended um, results of that that we don't that you know we would want to avoid and I want to make sure that we do whatever we recommend I think that y'all would all agree we want to be making an educated recommendation I agree. right I to my knowledge and maybe this is something we can look at as far as some general research because I know we have a limited budget but it was mentioned earlier that I think it was Jennings Louisiana that just recently underwent a charter review and one of the things they were really charged with was the technical aspect of bringing their charter up to date to reflect both the state's um, activities as well as things that, for example, uh, uh, emails versus faxes and things of that nature. They wanted it brought up to date. So that's something we can seek out and see what they did. It was mentioned Sugarland, Texas, I think Mr. Crockett would have talked about, had just recently undergone a renewal of their charter commission. David? I'd just like Johnson. to see, when, when are we looking at that uh, email coming on board where we can not only can the citizens email us and we have access to that, but that I would like to submit, Mr. Chairman, that we submit. We've got 18 months and we, we're, we're, it seems like we're wasting the taxpayers' time. I mean, I just, we're, we're, I love the conversation. I think we've all got great ideas, but we're here for a reason. 
let's figure out when that email is going to come online, when the citizens can support that email. We can respond to each other from that, and I would like to put on the table that we put out a 90-day schedule where we know right now, the next 90 days, that we're going to commit to to the citizens of this city that we call our home. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, we're just, uh, I feel like last week and this week, we're just spinning our wheels. We're, we're wasting their time, and we need to be more focused at what we do. So if we can get that email up online, we can communicate with each other, and we can come across to the citizens that we're here for will we'll be better served. Right. And I have no problem with that, David. I think what we'll need to do is reflecting on everyone's individual schedules and recommending that there's the police jury that has meetings, the school board that has meetings. Uh, we know that Wednesday nights are a little tough for some of us. So um, I, I would ask that maybe what we'll do is ask individual committee commission members that if you have dates in the future that are what I would call, I can't do it dates. Uh, that may be <clears throat> easier than trying to come about. You know, if you have a week and say, I can't meet any time this week, that would help us if we try to schedule two or three meetings in a given month. Uh, that sounds good, but there again, a 90 day forecast of what we intend on doing in the time we right. we're here, we're dedicated for 18 months. Let's focus on those 18 months. Let's tell these, citizens when we're going to be here and I think if I can't be here or anyone can't be here for any one reason we can watch it online we have an email that we can go to and uh, we're representing the folks out there in the audience and at, and at home watching so you know what I suggest is we, we take a bite out of the apple you know one bite just one bite at a time let's just take chapter one or say by the end of how many days we want to have reviewed even if we want to do homework on it later, let's just say we've reviewed and we've discussed this, set a timeline for how many chapters we want done. But what am I trying to say? That, 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 sounds, that sounds good, Vicki. I would like to challenge each and every member up here on, yeah, the, on then, the committee. Like that I said, we, when somebody we, says, well, you know, hey, I know it happened here. We can, it's not like it's set in stone. It's got to be completed by then, but at least we get a start and we have time Give us some time in there to study. I think some of it, I have talked to a lot of different people. Some of it, boy, there's a lot that they would like to see change. And I don't know if the changes would be good or bad, but that's what we're here to try to figure out, like Julie said. And I think the only way we do that is education. But let's set a timeline for, let's say, for the first three chapters, we want to be through by March. If we get through before then, then that's great. If it takes us a little longer, then we'll do our due diligence and look at it, but yeah, I think we need a timeline to start, and let's do it by chapters. I think it's imperative that we stay on that target because we, we need to get through that, and that, that first three months, that's a, that's a good starting point, but we need to be at the end of the 18 months. I wanna look back 25 years from now and have my grandchildren say, hey, you know, Grandpa did, did his due diligence on that charter commission, and we resolved something for the better of the city. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, I also know that when you start changing things, there are unintended consequences, and I want to make sure that the changes we make don't tank the city. Because let's be honest, you know there there are a lot of cities around that aren't doing too well, and you know we can talk all day about the ways that we can improve Bossier, but at the same time, we're the fastest growing parish north of I-10, so we're doing we'll something right. Reason. We don't want to change the things that we're doing right and mess up the good thing that we have going. And if we rush through this too much without really evaluating what the results are gonna be of the changes that we're making, I mean, you don't want 25 years from now, Mr. Johnson, your grandkids to be like, wow, that was a disaster. I mean, <laughs> so I, I think this is really important what we're doing here and we need to make sure we're making the right decisions. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Cheatham. All right, thank you. Hubs trying to get your attention for about 10, 15 minutes. I, I usually like not paying uh, attention to you. So I, I, I would like to, to talk about those comments, but we, we've jumped off out of item one and into item and two. And into item two, that's true. And so I would, <clears throat> I would like for us to get back to item one, and then I, I do have some comments on item two, but I, I might have to hold those. Okay. <clears throat> and, if, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, a couple of things. Number okay. one, Mr. Johnson, I, I would hope to have that email address up and running 
by the 12th, uh, hopefully sooner, and I'll notify everyone as soon as it's set up. And then the other thing would be, I just, this document, Mr. Friedley, that you got, I just scanned it and I've emailed it to all the members. Okay. So everyone will have benefit of that. That's quick enough. That's the stuff from Lisa. The one from Lisa and the one from Colonel Crockett that gave a suggested just a, an input sheet at the meeting. Did you say if you get some ideas or something, <clears throat> put it down, write it down. <clears throat> okay. Any, I guess it will go to do it like this. Any other information regarding that process of receiving input? We've talked about Mr. Crockett. We've talked about Ms. Johnson and possible rules for the meeting and the town hall meetings. Do we want to talk about, because we never have talked about the format of the town hall meetings. Shane, is that something that you have a feeling for to keep them formal or keep them rather informal, a possible round table discussion? How, how do you think we should, we, I know we need to have an educational overview talking about our mission and what we need, we are charged with, but I don't want to get it so it's too formalized that we don't let the general public feel like they have input to this process. Yeah, I, uh, I believe obviously you want to have an opening, you know, again, we're going to get there at 6.30 or at 6 o'clock at these town halls. They won't start till 6.30. We can visit with the public that attend the meetings, have conversations, and then at 6.30 maybe have the chair or someone else welcome everyone, tell them why we're here, why we're wanting to hear from them, um, and have maybe a 10 or 15 minute conversation about what the city charter is. Um, again, I'm, however you want to go with that, but I think it needs to be where we're listening, not us getting up there and talking for an hour and giving our opinions, but actually something where we're listening for the opinions of the people that are coming to that meeting because that's that's the only reason we're having the town halls is to listen to the people of Bossier City and hear what they would like for us to do you know um, but as far as formal informal I, I do think you know we all show up at six we, we we meet with people we conversate with people at 630 you kind of do a welcome you can show a form you can talk about the email address because I think that's the important thing is if we've got an email address where they can send us information, they can show up at the town hall and give us information. You know, they can watch on YouTube. They can be just as informed as we are uh, and, and bring those things and then we can discuss some of those items, um, you know, that are given to us at a forum that night or that are emailed to us or that are even, you know, we have conversations. but. I don't think we need to put too much of a format to where every one of us gets up there and says something. I think it's a, you kick it off as the <coughs> chair, explain why we're there, and then we allow them to, to conversate with us, whether that's everyone comes up and, and they get three minutes to talk to us about their thing or five minutes or, or again, I'm looking forward to the, being there at six o'clock and having face-to-face -face interaction with those people to hear what they what they say but if we want to give them a time limit to get up and speak to the group as a whole that's something we can we can discuss here as a group what do y'all do with the school board Shane with, with like people coming up to deal what rules do y'all follow at the school board we well and I'm retired or I'm not there anymore okay, but, but what did you do? Uh, they they allowed on each topic or each agenda item three minutes for them to speak and I think that's kind of the same as what the, the city the city council does they would have to put a form in if they wanted to talk at the school board meeting before the meeting started you'd write your name down and write what item number you wanted to speak on we could do that same thing if, if they show up some people are just wanting to show up to hear and <coughs> see that we're listening but some people are going to have ideas if we have a form and they want to talk to us they could fill out that form and say that they want to talk or they could fill out that form and just put their ideas of what they would like to see looked at in the charter. Okay. Does everybody feel comfortable with what we basically have outlined, which is somewhat of an opening statement at the meetings with a welcome? I think we'll follow the standard with a prayer, prayer and pledge. 
and then open it up for any kind of public input. We'll talk about during that process the forms that are available plus the email address that's available. And then we'll just let the general public will ask to respect everybody's time to maybe limit their comments to around three minutes. And then if necessary, we'll go from there. But I don't think we need to do it overly formalized. I mean, if the commission members are, feel that way. That way you don't, we don't have to feel like we're structuring a meeting. We're trying to open it up so that everybody feels very comfortable to come and, and give us open discussion about their ideas. Right. Uh, just for the respect of the other people who are attending the meeting's time, you know, the public, you know, we don't want to waste anybody's time. I mean, we just probably need to, like Vicki said, you know, we're not going to hear about stuff that's not relative to this and just kind of reiterate that so that nobody gets embarrassed. <laughs> right. I agree with I, that. I think, you know, if, if we get off topic between myself and Richard Ray, I think we can try to kind of focus the person to target their comments on something specific. I think you probably need to kind of set up some three-minute. Yeah, we'll do a three general three-minute par you know, parameter and ask people to respect that. To eight, that. Really, hour and a half. Okay, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of the suggestions I would make is that prior to our town hall meetings, when we publish the schedule, that we stress to the citizens that the charter is available for review. It's on the city website and strongly encourage the citizenry to go out and review the charter and when they've got an issue to reference the issue in the charter so that we know exactly what issue we're going to deal with. We may not deal with chapter 14 of the charter to days from here, but if we know someone has an issue with a specific section of the charter, when we get to that session of the charter, then we can review it at that time. So. Uh, I think that's going to be important because we're we're dealing with the charter, the entire charter. When the charter goes up to the vote of the citizens, they're voting up or down on the charter as his proposed, not specific issues within the charter, but the entirety of the charter. So it is important that the citizens that are going to be making suggested suggestions based upon a charter that they reference those suggestions in the charter, so that when we get to those issues in the charter, we can address them at that time. I think that's a great idea and possibly a link to the what to tell them where to find the charter when we announce the meeting okay all right any other comments regarding that issue I don't think we have a motion that we need to handle on that area for new business is there anything else that do we need to make a motion on how to handle the input from the public and possible input on those meetings? I, I don't think we need a motion for that. I think if you've got a consensus of commission, how, yeah, and you're the chair and you can kind of run that town hall okay. based off of feedback that you've got here today, I, I don't think we need to set up any rules for how that's going to be ran. All right. <clears throat> Under new business, uh, we have a number two, the discussion of regarding the charter review process. I Mr. should Mr. tell Chairman, you that, Mr. Chairman. I'm yes. sorry to interrupt you. Before you oh, move on ahead. to number two, what about we discussed or I, I brought up that I I went. It's been mentioned, and we mentioned in our first meeting that this body would just use General Roberts' rules. Correct. Um, I would suggest that at least it be that be discussed. The the, the current edition is the twelfth edition, and that if there's going to be I would ask that there at least be some documentation of that, that, that you adopt it as general rules. And if there's going to be any other, um, if, if you're just going to use Robert's Rules 12th edition, that's fine. But I think that that needs to be adopted formally. And any other rules for either these meetings or town hall meetings um, would need to be adopted so that you have it formally adopted. Okay. I have no problem with that. Does ever, anybody have any objections that we generally follow? We're going to follow Robert's Rules of Order, and when we get to those commission meetings, we're going to try to limit, just as we've done here for our meetings, a limitation of three minutes. Anybody can be extended by any members of the commission at a, at a request, but that at least give us an idea of how we're going to follow our general order of business. 
Is that acceptable to you, Mr. Ray? So we'll make that in a form of a motion and a second. So I need a one comment. clarification. Did you say for the town hall meetings and these meetings would be the yes, time limit? Yes, for both for meetings, we'll comment. follow General Roberts' rules of order, but we'll try to limit our comments to the general public as we've done to about three minutes, and then we can be flexible as we need to beyond that. The town hall meetings will not involve any taking any action, so I would not think it would be um, appropriate, I guess, to you wouldn't need a formal. Right. I agree. I think just, just have the, a general agenda of what we're trying to follow at those town hall meetings. Correct. And part of the Roberts rules, and I just violated it because I didn't wait for the chair, but <laughs> it happened a few times earlier while I was patiently uh, waiting. And I Anybody think Anybody else want to comment after Mr. Cheatham is finished <laughs> now? And it, oh, no, and I was saying that not oh. to pick on you, but to the no, other I'm, committee members because there was some back and forth and people talking without getting the chairs. Uh, you know blessing and uh, I kind of held out until I, I couldn't anymore but uh, I do think that that's a great idea to have Robert's rules and and to have some sort of decorum with with our meetings that we're having here I don't think that's needed for town halls but um, I do think that's a good idea all right um, mr. Jeter the only thing I would add to that mr. chair is that you know, and Robert's rule of orders, you can only speak on an item one time. And I think we still need to em employ that process during our town hall meetings because I don't think we need six or seven citizens getting up there speaking on the same issue. If the issue has been addressed, it's been addressed. But also, you know, you can only address that issue one time. So there are some basic rules, and you may want to uh, right. go over <clears throat> those basic rules during our town hall so that we're all on the same page and the citizens are on the same page because obviously if someone has already addressed the issue that you may want it to have addressed there may not be a need to address it again and then you can't keep readdressing that issue all right i agree with that that's we talked i think about that is just if you have a group that shows up that's interested in one issue get a representative to talk about it everybody else can put their form in that they want to comment officially on it and we'll have that so uh, can I get a motion, Mr. Jeter, then to follow Robert's Rules of Order, the 12th edition, and with the limitation that we try to um, follow those as best we can and then try to keep a decorum of maybe limiting initial statements to three minutes per topic, and then we'll go beyond that if necessary. So you want to make that in the form of a motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that for our general body meetings here and the commission and for the general public meeting that we use Robert Rose Vardar the 12th edition, edition as our guidance for all of those meetings. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Second by our secretary. All those in favor say aye and please show your hand. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, anyone opposed? <coughs> Motion passes for the record unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now I assume we can move on to the last item on the agenda, the discussion of the charter review process. Um, what I was saying to you is that the last meeting I did go before the city council and ask that if any of the city council members had suggestions or ideas that they wanted to pass on to their individual appointees that they do so also I would request and ask the appointees feel free to contact your city councilman to see if he has any rep comments or records for that um, I know that mr. Cheatham you mentioned to me that you've been contacted by a couple of the city councilmen yes I, I would like to read into the record uh, I have two different uh, documents to read but the first one I would like to read is uh, from City Councilman at Large, Chris Smith. It says, Dear Charter Commission members, I am writing you today regarding changes for the Bossier City Charter as requested by Mr. Friedley at the January 30th, 2024 regular Bossier City Council meeting. It has been my desire to see a Charter Commission formed to review Bossier City's Home Rule Charter since the day I took office in June of 2021. My desire was based on my review of the current charter and the many changes I felt could, could be implemented. Over the course of the last three, attempt, three years, attempts to see this as a reality have failed until the fall of 2023. The motivation behind the newly formed Charter Review Commission was in response to a petition signed by 3,000 residents 
of Bossier City to support the idea of term limits. That petition to this day remains in litigation with the results not yet known. It is my firm belief that this Charter Review Commission should only look at the singular issue that is the motivation behind its creation and propose the amendment as written in the petition to the citizens of the city of Bossier City. After a review of your meeting on January 30th, it appears that there is a motivation by this body to have a more robust amendment to the charter than just the one singular ish issue. I want to express my desire that any amendments done by this body, to by this body should be presented to the city council and the city of Bossier City by its March 12, 2024 regular meeting. I think Chris had a typo there. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, this will ensure that the amended charter will be placed on the November 2024 ballot where there will be the highest turnout of voters. Missing this ballot will not be in the best interest of the city of Bossier City. I understand that there may be questions on if this proposition is supported by the majority of the people of the city of Bossier City. On November 2nd, 2012, the residents of Bossier Parish were asked if they supported term limits for the Bossier Parish School Board. The vote also on a presidential ballot had a 68.1% turnout and passed with 82% in favor. On October 21st, 1995, with the governor election on the ballot, Bossier Parish also passed term limits on the legislature with a vote of 79% in favor. Based on the history of Bossier Parish and term limits, I would contend that this is an issue fully supported by the majority of the citizens. Finally, to properly amend the charter, the commission would need more time than just a few weeks. Unfortunately, making the deadline to have this placed on the fall ballot doesn't give the commission enough time to properly do its work. Changes are needed, but it is my belief that if we that we should aim for this to be on the ballot where we know that the vast majority of people will be voting and not on a smaller off-cycle ballot that may have less than a third participation. Thank you for agreeing to serve the citizens of Bossier. Warm rega regards, Chris C. Smith. All right. So can I get a letter for the minutes, that letter? Yes, Shanks. I'll give you a copy of that. And I also have another one that I wasn't able to print before I left my office. I gave our secretary a copy of the letter from okay. Mr. Smith. Um, bear with me one second as I'll pull the other one up. Second one is much shorter, not as many words, so you won't have to listen to me for as long. This is from Councilman District 1, Brian Hammonds. Dear Charter Commission, as requested by Preston Friedley at our council meeting, I am writing to inform you that the The only change I currently see that would be addressed by the Charter Commission is the item of term limits on the Bossier City Council and Bossier City Mayor. Although I think there are many other changes we should consider, the timeline to be able to get this on the ballot in November doesn't give adequate time to do a thorough review and make all the necessary changes. I would be in support of the City Council adopting another ordinance after this initial review to start a more thorough Charter Review Commission and would welcome each one of you to be back to be a part of that process. The citizens of, citizens of Bossier City spoke loudly when they sent the petition to the City Council asking for term limits and due to circumstances that hasn't been able to move forward with this process, we can make that change. Best wishes, Brian Hammonds. All right. And uh, would you make a copy of that available have, both to our secretary Mr. and to Chair, our Chair, I have council. a copy. He asked me to read that statement tonight. Okay. Could you give make sure a copy of that is given to our secretary for our minutes? I, I will. Okay. Secretary. And I, Mr. Chair, I do have another question. I would like to know if any other council members either gave anything to us as a charter commission or uh, spoke to you about items that they have that they, they would like to be put in front of the charter commission at this time. Okay. That's a... Uh, had, uh, that's open to any of the commission members. Have you had any discussions with the individuals who appointed you to serve on the commission, giving you any instructions or information regarding how they'd like to see us proceed? And I turn to Mr. Jeter and then Ms. Whitman. I have received no additional communication from any member of the council other than the appointee that I believe he outlined his desire when he made his appointment. All right. 
And I, of course, I've spoken with Vince, but he's not instructed me. He's just told me to go and follow my heart and what I thought was best. Right. So that's the only instruction I've received. Nothing specific on anything. I have not either. David? I have the letter that I was going to read. I'm sorry. Uh, Julianne? Same thing. I haven't received any instructions other than just to do what I think is right. All right. We'll, uh, Mr. Take Chair, care. I would just like to make a follow-up comment to that. I'm sorry I cut no, you go off. Ahead. No, no, Mr. Cheatham, please. Um, you went to the city council meeting after our last meeting. Yes, sir. And spoke to them and told the council and the mayor that if they had any items, you would like them to get them to us. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. going to let us all sit and think about that for a second. Well, we did these, hear from two of our city councilmen. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. So a lot of these councilmen that have not given us anything as of yet, and again, I say this, I go back to the last meeting. They, they put this resolution together back in October to put a charter commission together. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been there 25 years. Surely they have some items that they disagree with in that charter that they would have already had to us in October, November, December, January. Wonder why they're not giving them to us. May I speak? Ms. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. I know I was let, taking a let, pause there. All right. His, um, that was a pregnant I, pause. I, I, I'll say this again, and I said it last week. This charter commission was put together because of one item, because of 3,000 people in our city that wanted term limits. Nothing spoke louder than what, in my opinion, the question that was asked a few minutes ago, and, and none of those council members have given us additional items. I truly believe, with all my heart, that we need to, to think about moving forward with the one item that has been put in front of us. It's the item that we've heard over 3,000 people. I, I want to have our town hall meetings because well, I'm also hoping that another 3,000 people from Bossier City walk in and just say, hey, I just want term limits. I hope they have other items as well. But just like Mr. Hammond said in his letter, we're not the only people capable of changing a charter. But the reason we were put together was to put this one issue to the voters. And look, we don't all have to agree. Some of us are for term limits, some of us aren't. But what we are to do, in my opinion, is to put this item in front of the voters and let them decide. If they vote it down, then Shane Cheatham's vote, I lost. I took an L. It won't be the first L, and it won't be the last L I take. But, but when we go and ask the councilman that, that wanted this charter, to bring us items, and here we are. I mean, I feel like if you were, if someone put you up and didn't bring you any items today, wow, that should tell you a whole lot. You went to that meeting. I was sent a letter, and I'm sorry, David, that I read that letter. I received it, and I did not know that you had a copy of it as well, uh, or I would have let you read that letter. Uh, I'm not asking for a vote, not making a motion today, but I would like for everybody to really think about what's right for Bossier City. The right, what's right for Bossier City in Shane's opinion is the same thing the 3,000 people that signed that. That's what the people want us to do. So I, I challenge between now and our February 12th meeting that you start opening your ears and, and, and listen to people, not just the loud people like me maybe, but the people around our city that have said, we want term limits and we want an opportunity to vote on it. And we have an election coming up in November where we have high turnout and we have the opportunity to allow people to vote yes or no. 
and then another charter commission can be put together with us or with others to address any other issues. But as we sit here right now, even after asking for other issues or concerns, there were no, none of those councilmen took the time, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, to type it, write it, say it, call it. And it, 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 it makes my hair stand up on my arms that it wasn't important enough. I had to take time out of my day to day trying to make money for my family. I had to take time to be here, but they couldn't take the time to send an item for us to have up for discussion and talk about. Folks, if you don't know, if you can't read between the lines, then we, then we have some very smart people up here. And I'm not one of them. I'm not a smart guy. I'm, I, I think I got some street cred, but I'm not, I'm not book smart. But I'm common sense smart. And 3,000 people have said, we want you to put this up for us to vote on. Those 3,000 people, when they signed that, they just wanted an opportunity to vote on it. That's the only thing that we've been asked to do. Even after asking to give us some items. Right. So I, I, I won't repeat myself, but folks, I'm gonna tell you what. I want to hear what the people have to say, and I'm challenging probably four people watching on YouTube. Maybe we can all go home and share it. Come out to these town halls. The city council members, two of them, sent us a letter, and I read both of them into the record. The other ones did not. The mayor has already told us what he wants. His resolution was attached to my name and your name, what he wanted. I believe we've got to move forward with the resolution that the people of Bossier City want. And if you can't see that we slash you are being played by delaying and talking about we're gonna go change this and this and this and this, the first charter commission that was put together didn't do any, get anything accomplished. They put a water raise in there. The second one, I, I, can't tell you I remember exactly what they got done or if they got anything done. But we have an opportunity to put the item that people, we already know the people of Bossier City want. And I'm gonna challenge each of you to think about that, reflect about that, discuss that with the people that, that are around you and that conversate with you. And, and, and let's, let's not play charades, folks. I'm too old to play games. I could be playing games with my son right now, mm -hmm. but I'm up here speaking for the people of Bossier City. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Uh, Ms. Sure. Parks, I know that you want, uh, let's, let's, I, I'll come back to you, David, okay. because, but let me yes, ask Parks. Julianne. If I know you, you want to, to make first, a, I don't care. No, no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> The reason that we are here, I believe, the reason that we were chosen to represent our districts is because the councilman who appointed us thought that we were all thoughtful people who love Bossier, who want to do what's best for Bossier. And so as I sit here today, I take it as a very big responsibility to try to do what I think is right. In order to do that, I believe we have to look at places where term limits have been implemented. We have to move beyond the arguments of what we think they're gonna accomplish and look at what they actually do accomplish in a city of this size. And I haven't done that yet. I've, looked, I've done some preliminary studies on it and what the overwhelming result of what you see of anywhere that they've done this is that it polarizes the council even more than it already is. And when you look at a place across the river where they can't get anything done at the city council because they're so polarized, that scares me as I sit here today. I don't want to just pass something that, that I think is going to be detrimental to the city without deciding if it really does fix what we think it's going to fix. Now, talking to the people, I have talked to many people about this issue. Many of the people that I know who have signed the petition, when I asked them, well, what 
what made you sign this petition? Well, um, you know, the gentleman told me all these pros about about term limits. I said, well, did he tell you any cons? Any Because everything has a con. You know, every drug that you take has a side effect you didn't intend. There's always going to be that. No matter what the law is, there's going to be an unintended consequence. And they said, no, he just told me all the good stuff about it. Well. If you go to the doctor and they don't tell you these are the risks of the procedure, these are the risks of this drug, how can you make an informed decision? So I want the people to have the information before they make those decisions. And when you say 3,000 people, well, how many people are in the city, though? It's, it's a heck of a lot more than 3,000, and that ain't a majority. Um, also, when you're trying to put it on a ballot with something like the presidential election, what is that saying? It's saying that you want to get the votes of people who don't care enough about it to go to the ballot and vote on it, but they're just going to be there anyway for the president, and they'll just click the box. Okay, so that, that's what it says to me if you're trying to get it on there with something that's a bigger issue, that they don't care enough about it to go and vote on it, but we're just going to kind of sneak their vote in. And I don't like that either. And so... What, what is the point of the term limits? Obviously, there's somebody on the city council that people want term limited out. But the problem with that is, what about the people who voted them in? You're trying to tell them that they aren't smart enough to make that decision themselves, to, to cast their vote for that person? And I don't like that because you sell it as selling the power to the people, but in reality, you're taking the power away from other people. And, not to mention, if you want term limits, you can vote people out. There are many people who are voted out after one term. Just this last election, you voted out two longstanding members and a longstanding mayor. I mean, clearly, the people can vote on term limits every time they go to the ballots on something. And so with all these things going through my head, it makes it really hard for me just to follow the bandwagon and not stand up and say, hey, is this really what the people want? Or have they only been told one side of it? Are we only asking some people? You know, and if the answer to that, after we look at it, is yes, absolutely, they want term limits. Yes, it accomplishes the things that the people who are fighting for it say it does. Then absolutely, I would be all for it. But we just aren't there yet. And I think to say this is what all the people want is just not a fair statement. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Cheatham. Um, I. I understand your opinion and I value your opinion and I, I respect you and I and I hope you know that. You said something earlier when we were on the wrong agenda item and I didn't comment back to it, but you talked about Bozier Parish was flourishing. It's growing. Bozier City is not. And 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 I think that's where a little bit of a different view comes, right? So from the parish level we're growing. Halton is growing. South Bozier had been growing. Uh, Benton, Benton is growing. What Bozier City is not, and I could, I, and nobody wants to sit up here and listen to me because I could talk to you for an hour and tell you every reason why it's not growing. But I, I, I won't bore anybody, and I'll be respectful of your of everyone's time. Whether you want, you don't want term limits or not, or whether I want them, you and I don't get to make the decision for the people of Bozier City. Let's put it to the voters and let's let them vote. And if they vote, if, if they vote that they don't want to put in term limits, then you win. And my vote, I, again, I took an L. But we, but and and you you, you talk, I think this is the second time you brought up the three thousand people. But how many people are there in Bozier City? Well, how many voted in the last mayor election? Anybody, anybody in here? Colonel Crockett, give me that number. Less than 8,000. Okay. Less than 8,000 people voted in the last mayoral election and council election. But we've got 3,000 signatures, and we'd have probably 10,000 if, if, if there was more daylight and time and day, that people want it. The people of Bossier City, and I know that's why some people don't want it to go on the ballot, because then term limits will take place. But it's not up to, it's not what Shane wants. It's not what Juliana wants. It's not what Preston wants. It's what do the people of Bossier City. And if they vote it down, they vote it down. If they vote for it, then we, we enact term limits. And then we've listened to the people. There's, 
I don't know, 12 people in here today. And I thank each one of them for taking the time to come here today. But there's 3,000 people that signed, a, signed their signature to a petition. And the people that got handed that petition decided to take it to a lawsuit instead of move forward and put it on a ballot. wonder why. Did they ever bring up at a council meeting why term limits were a bad thing? Did they go do a study on it? No. That's all. All right. You're, you're making it personal, and I'm talking about principles. We have a saying, and okay. there is a clear goal here, and my point is this. When you make a law based on one scenario, it's always going to be a bad law because that's not how you make laws. You make laws based on what, what do you, what is the effect of this law going to be? And we have to look at that. We can't make it personal about certain city council members or about certain people sitting here today. And again, I didn't say if I'm for or against it. What I said was I want the people to be able to make an informed decision based on the data available. And I, I think that's the right way to handle it. Right, okay. and, I, and I would just make sure, and I caution the members to keep the comments as, as Ms. Parks just said. I think it's important that we talk about principal philosophies. I, I do, Shane, think you're correct, but I do think we need to talk about that from a perspective and not taking this personal to any member of the commission because we're all volunteers doing the best we can. Mr. Chair, Mr. Of order, thank you. You have Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, waiting. you're next to comment, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was elected or submitted to this council by Brian Hammonds. I didn't get to read this letter, but he did write this letter and, and took the time to write it. He nominated me, nominated me to be here, and I'm here for the citizens of Bossier City, not, not just South Bossier, but every citizen in this city. I want to hear your comments. I want to hear your... I want to encourage you to vote. The importance of that is, is, is just so crucial. We're losing our, our, not only our city, our state, nationally, we're losing because we're letting people that we elect run their offices the way they want to. If I can bring anything out of this committee is that I want your input. The citizens watching, all of you watching, I encourage you to talk to your friends, neighbors, at church, in the gas station, anywhere you're at, because we have, every citizen in Bossier City right now is on the hook for about $6,500. If I'm wrong, you can check me on that in a moment. We are absolutely losing this nation. We're losing our children. We're losing our first responders. One thing I do want to represent up here is that I want to keep our first responders. This gentleman donates his time when he could be spending it somewhere else where people need them sometimes in life-threatening situations. Our Bossier City Police Department, our Fire Department, and our City Marshal's Office, and our court system in the city of Bossier. They stand tall. People want to move to this city because of those entities. It has nothing to do with who's sitting here, me or anyone else. It doesn't have to do anything to do with the mayor, in my opinion. I humbly ask each and every one of you tonight watching or listening to this telecast that you come to our town hall meetings and you express your wants, desires, and needs for this city. Don't think about yourself today. Think about your children and your grandchildren. We have to have a better city and we have to take control of it right now. It's just that simple. So I would ask each and every one of you to please talk to everyone you can. We will get it posted we will encourage you to come to our town halls and we want to hear your voice. That's why I'm sitting here, not for my opinion, not for anyone's opinion up here, but to hear your opinion and to try to come up with something that in 25 years when they read it, they say that stubborn salesman had an agenda for the <laughs> betterment of Bossier City. That's all I have to say. Just please come to our town halls and vote. Okay. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you. Thank you, David. So, I'm Ms. Say, Ms. so Shane, <clears throat> you're talking about while we're here, I, well, I was under a different assumption. I, you know, when, when Vince asked me to do this, the first thing I said was, you know, I, 
I don't know if I can do that or not. I'll have to see because I didn't want to conflict. You know, I didn't want to be a conflict. So Vince really couldn't explain to me exactly because, you know, it was just formulating. He said, call Chris Smith. So, and he said, ask him. He can tell you. So I called Chris and I said, Chris, can you explain to me, you know, what this is that Vince has asked me to, to participate in and what exactly we were doing? What, what are we going to do? And would there be any conflict? And what I was told was it wasn't about getting term limits on a ballot before November. I was told that I was going to, we had 18 months, and that we would have to have it up by then, and that we were to study the charter. And then we were to look at it and then see if there's any changes that we thought were going to be made. I've spent days, I've got all these people I've seen, all, and I've got notes all through this charter because I'm doing what Chris Smith told me I was going to do, and that's review this charter. Not, hey, I just need you to get term limits on the ballot. That's not what he told me. If he had told me that, I'd have said, you got the wrong person. Because, you know, my personal opinion on term limits, you already know. But I'm not trying to stop anybody, I don't, any of you from having a voice, but I was charged with studying the charter, and that's what I was told I was gonna do, and now I get up here, I feel like I'm the one being played. <coughs> and you understand my point? I wasn't told you're just here to get this I, I do in. understand your point, but yeah. again, I go back to the men that have been Let here for 20 something years. Let me recognize Mr. Cheatham because I know she was asking and making a comment. Yeah. And I want to make sure, Ms. Whitman, if you have anything else that you need to add no, to that. No, I mean, and yeah. it's, it's, I'm not here <clears throat> anything personal. And I'm not trying, you know. <clears throat> no, I understand. I, and Ms. Whitman, I, I 100% understand if you, where you're it, coming it, from. And again, yeah. and we, so we, I don't want us debating each other, but right. I, I do think it's important. Ms. Whitman's comments are finished. So, Mr. Cheatham, question. go ahead. Yeah, she asked me a question. That's why I, I decided to answer. And Ms. Woodman, I understand the conversation you, you were asked, but you will not be able to learn that charter frontwards and backwards in 18 months. And they know that. Yeah, well. Everybody, and the, the councilmen that have been there for, 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 for decades, I'm not so sure they know it. If they knew it, they wouldn't have ordinances that violate it. <laughs> but I, I 100, again, I have respect for for everybody that's up here and we, we can differ in opinion and that's okay in today's society if you differ you know you're you're canceled i'm not wanting to cancel anybody i i i 100 respect your opinion and and everybody else is up here however if you sit back and you look at why why we're here now again whether you ask you know you ask vince you ask tommy ask whoever all the councilmen but then we went and asked them give us some items that you think and they've been doing a lot longer than you and a lot longer than any of us up here and they don't have any items well they must think it's perfect I got a lot and 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 so you know again I want everybody to share their opinion and we're not gonna all agree mm -hmm. but I also want everybody to be aware of delay and installing and well we'll get you something in two months we'll get you something in three months I can't make a month's worth of meetings you know we, 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 we start pushing that out what are we gonna what are we are we gonna be able to accomplish anything I hope we are whether that's pushing through with the one item that's put in front of us or we decide to break it down I, I I'm very familiar with the items in the Charter and be happy to go in and 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 change several of them um, but why are those councilmen that put this together not bringing us anything that they want us to address? I, 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 mean, I don't understand that. So may I say something? Yes, ma'am, go so ahead. So I, I said we don't, why are we waiting on them? I, I, I didn't wait. I went and talked to people, studied, I've been reading. I mean, I think that's what we need to be doing. Okay. <clears throat> I have a lot of questions about this whole charter. <laughs> Go ahead. So I just want to say I'm not political. So I, do I vote? I vote. But I'm not political, and so this is a new world for me. Uh, I come out of the corporate world, and I'm used to following the scope of the job that I'm given. 
and I, I feel empowered when the person that gives me that job doesn't put a fence around me and say, and, and say things like, only look at this. Right. So from my perspective, I look at it, I've been empowered to look at the whole charter and look at things that might be worth looking at. And it's, it's an elephant. And so how did I approach it? I'm taking one bite at a time, and I'm looking at those big pieces that I think could have the best impact. Term limits could be one of them. It could be that. But to say there's nothing else in this charter that needs changing, I think it's very narrowly focused. And that's not what I read that we were charged to do. And, you know, I feel empowered when I'm not put in, in, in a box and said I can't get out of it. And I haven't been approached um, to do it that way. So my thought is we've got a short period of time to do it even in the 18 months. If we can study it and we can get two to three big, big chunks that are going to move Bossier City forward, I think that's great. But, but it's, it's eye-opening because y'all have been in the political arena, but most people in Bossier City are not. And so how empowering is that, that I get a chance to make a difference? And that's why I take it so seriously. Yep. Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, I said, yes, yeah, and, and I look at this, are. you know, not looking <clears throat> just for, I'm, you know, David and I have discussed, I'm not looking for something just immediate. You know, what I want to look at is if when these are decisions we're going to make and how are they going to affect us, not to make just, you know, everybody happy today, but what is today going to look like 10 years down the road? I mean, th these are, you know, I, I'll take, I've done a little bit of study, and I just saw in Grapevine, Texas, and you can look at it, uh, they have a, a term limits, and they're look, right now, they're voting, I see they're in March or May, I had those notes at home, to extend it, because you know what happened? They got a young mayor, they got a great city council, and they're fixing all be not eligible, and so now they're looking to extend it so they can keep them on there, because the city's doing well. And you know, what I find curious is, you know, we just had elections for our sheriff, who's under these terms, and of course I know we're not talking about this, the uh, sheriff's department, but I'm playing the what if game. Why in the world would you not want a new sheriff? He has done a wonderful job. Well, we wouldn't even have the right to go and vote for him under term limits. So what if, playing the what ifs, what if our next mayor is a young guy and we're in the same situation as Grapevine and we're booming, I know, why would you want to take them away? You take, you know, let's say you have a great, Chris Smith is young, you have a great city councilman in South Bossier, he wants to stay there and he's doing things. So where else in, in business do you see somebody come and yank somebody out because they've been there just 12 years and they've done a great job? I mean, that should be up to that company and that should be up to the voters, you have the right to go vote them out. And you know, I'm just saying we could, what, what you don't want now, you're making long-term plans that hurt us down the road. I mean, what, look at Jill Sessions, what she has done for the clerk of court's office has just been, she's done an amazing job. Mm -hmm. What if we get a mayor like that? What if we get some young city councilmen like that? All right. Can I, can yes, I answer that question? Well, Cheatham, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I would love for us to get a, a, a young mayor, young city councilman, but I would also challenge them to mentor someone else. Uh, I don't believe that when people get into office that if they do a good job, they should stay there. I believe that you're serving the people of your community. And, and whether that, whatever that, that is, and again, it's just a difference of, of opinion, but you don't have to serve the community for the rest of your life and be on the government's payroll. Well, you know, I, that, I, I don't get paid that's nothing. the voter's choice. That is the voter's choice. That's the voter's choice. I, I, if I like my city councilman and I think he's doing a great job, I, ma'am, oh, I'm speaking. All right, we need to keep comments so, down. Go ahead. No, let's say, 
for instance, you have somebody, when, when you put something like this, you got somebody great in South Bossier, it gives me in North Bossier the power to take away who you want or vice versa. That's what I'm just saying. What we have, right? we have a mayor and we have two new city councilmen right now because of why they got voted in. The other ones got voted out. So votes work. Now I'm not saying that I will not put city uh, term limits up for a vote. So not, I'm just saying, I think like Juliana, I think we need to do some studying and, and see, do, does it work? What are the advantages of it and what are the disadvantages of it? And if you're gonna put it in the voters, from the voters, you need to give them, you know, the good and the bad. All right. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I know that you've asked to um, make a couple of remarks. I just wanna focus again, we're, we're up here as a charter commission for the folks that are here tonight and for everyone listening. And I wanna stress again, Jim, I thank you tonight for your time to allow us to be here and be safe in being here. I appreciate your time. Because in my opinion, if I accomplish anything in this city, it's for my budget city police officers, my marshal's office, my fire department, the city court, to have a budget and know that we're stand beside them 100%, that we're not gonna spend your money fruitlessly on stupid agendas. There's some things that have gone on and I shouldn't speak to it because it's not personal. But if we, you guys are why this city's built, so I'm gonna speak to you if you don't mind. If anyone has a family and they wanna relocate somewhere, there's a reason they wanna to move to Bossier City and Bossier Parish. And it's because of the safety. It's because they, they know if someone hurts them or does wrong to them, they're going to be held accountable in Bossier Parish. We're losing officers, we're losing firemen, we're losing people as we speak. We're spending the money to train them. We have to engage, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I implore you to come to our town hall meetings because your opinion matters, but it only matters if you speak up. So if you're watching me on TV tonight, we're here to represent you. We're not here to banty words and argue amongst each other. Although I love the passion and I respect everyone on this committee because we want to see things done for the betterment of this city. I, I know everyone up here truly wants that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit speaking. I thank everyone for your comments tonight. I thank everyone for your time, especially you, Jim. I, I, I'm humbled by you giving us the time that you've given us. We'll try not to waste that. I've been waiting. All right, Julia, thank you. I know you. Go ahead. Mr. Johnson said a lot of what I wanted to say. I, don't, I think we would be doing a disservice if we, if we went through this charter commission and rushed it and didn't address the police pay. I think that's very important. And if we, we would be failing if we didn't do that. Um, he covered that, so I'm not going to keep talking about it. But I just, I just want to make the point. It's the, you know, the white elephant in the room about term limits, which is you. You say you're giving the people the power, but like Miss Vicki said, you're not. You're taking the power away from the voters to vote on who they want to vote on. You're saying, you voted this guy in, but we don't like him, so we're gonna change the rules so you can't do that next time. And that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what you're doing. You're saying, your vote doesn't matter. We wanna take it away to where you're not allowed to vote on that person. And if you have term limits, that's what you're telling the people who voted in the councilman that you don't like that we don't want you to be able to vote on that person. And no matter what you say, that's it. I mean, that's the fact of it. And so if we're gonna make a big change like that, we need to make sure it's gonna do what we want and not like Miss Vicki said, then it, it ends up being a negative thing because we have somebody good and we, we can't keep them like Sheriff Whittington, for example. And so we, we can't ignore that. We can't ignore that side effect whenever we're considering this um, and I just, Okay. I want to make sure that we are we're looking at that mr. Cheatham comment promise this will be the last time I hold Joe up tonight mm -hmm. page 48 of the city charter chapter 21 item number four the Charter Review Commission will be presented a draft of suggested charter changes jointly drafted by the mayor and the city council members I'm gonna read that one more time. 
The Charter Review Commission will be presented a draft of suggested charter changes jointly drafted by the mayor and the city council members. The draft of suggested changes shall represent a coordinated recommendation of the mayor and the city council, but will, but will indicate, if applicable, areas of disagreement. The commission shall develop proposed amendments as soon as feasible, but no later than 18 months. It says it right there in the first sentence. The Charter Review Commission will be presented a draft of suggested charter changes jointly drafted by the mayor and the city council members. We have not been presented with anything except from what the mayor presented us. Maybe y'all can reach out to your councilman and talk to them, and maybe they'll give you some items. I, again, I would love for that, but nothing has been presented uh, at, at, at that. And I won't, uh, I mean, obviously we as, it, and again, I'm, I'm a, I've got thick skin, I'm, I'm a big boy, I wouldn't put myself out there if I, if I couldn't handle my own. But when we're talking up here amongst each other, let's talk at the cameras or at others, that way you, you know, I kind of get a little feisty when people start coming at me directly. Uh, and and not, I don't mean that in any general state, but if I started talking to one of you disrespectfully, that wouldn't come off well, very, I didn't very good. No, you did not. You did so not. I to be but anyway. I don't want us to get to that point also because, again, we're all here, and, and look, again, we can disagree, but and, and, and we can never put term limits up there if y'all don't want to do that. Just like I disagree, I thought we should have all the meetings at 6 p.m. Um, we might not put term limits up, but at this point, the reason, I'll say it again, the reason we are here is because instead of moving forward with the petition that 3,000 people signed, and maybe that's not enough people, that's what the city charter says, that's how many people needed to sign it to push it through, but maybe that's not enough people. Um, I'll, I'll be here for every meeting as long as y'all want to meet. But I also believe 100% the reason you weren't given any items, the reason you haven't gotten any items, is because the longer y'all have to wait, we have to wait, the people of Bossier City have to wait. Absolute power, and I, and I sat here for 30 minutes and said I talked myself out of saying this, but yeah, I don't always say what, what I should. But I'm going to say this, absolute power brings absolute corruption. And the reason you put term limits in place is to give voters an opportunity to vote on someone new, not someone that's raised 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 in their, in their campaign bank account. You get fresh ideas, you get new faces. Now. Could it be a bad decision and they screw up for four years? Then you gotta find somebody else to vote for. But the problem and the reason that 80% of the people in our country believe in term limits is because absolute power breeds absolute corruption. Thank you. Right. Yes, ma'am. So, so I was looking at the minutes um, Mr. Ray, and you had mentioned that you would have a draft of the changes possibly for us. Is yes, there a ma date I, that's that what we I, could I look brought for that? that? I, I, I spoke to the group last meeting and I indicated that with the quick turnaround of this meeting, I did not expect it to be by this meeting, uh, but I have received, I have received items from the mayor that are in addition to the, the one issue. There's some other technical items that need to be cleaned up I have not received input from the council yet but uh, I, I know that that's being worked on and I will the best I can tell you is at the next meeting I will report that but I, I believe Mr. Cheatham and Mr. Chairman that I mentioned that at the last meeting that I hope to have it as soon as possible uh, I do believe that that is coming, Mr. Cheatham, like I said last time, that I think a draft is coming that will have the proposed changes, and I will try my best to have that next meeting. Okay. And, and while I'm, I'm already, Go ahead. I have the floor, I guess, uh, there is an email address now set up. It's charter at bossiercity.org. 
while we were sitting here, I was my, our IT people gave me confirmation. It's charter, C H A R T E R at BosierCity.org, and I've tested it, and you should receive a. We we got it, Richard. Thank okay. you very much. Very expedient. I appreciate it. So again, I just make that uh, available to the public. They can send information or anything regarding their ideas on changing the home rule charter is to send it to charter at bossiercity.org. Okay. Any other comments before um, we move towards the final item of adjournment? Anything else? I think I've, we'll let everybody have. You haven't had any opportunity for the public to at least make one three-minute comment? Sure. We can always do that uh, regarding the charter process, so this yeah. would be a good time for yeah. that for the public. Absolutely, and it's, it's partially related to some of the things that have been said today. First of all, I think... Uh, tell us who you are. Oh, David address. Crockett, 653 Dumain Drive, Bozer City, Louisiana. Thank you. And, and let me tell you, I'm, I'm absolutely motivated by all of your motives for why you're here. I have no question of that. I think the, the mechanism can be used to accomplish both things, and I think that's one thing that we ought to put on the table. Let's say that you, because I absolutely think the charter, I've already got a list of about 12 things that I think need to be changed. But you may not be able to get through all of that in this amount of time because it's a lot. You know, study and organization of a city and why you change organizations. The city isn't organized. I've said this once before. The city is not organized the way the charter says that it should be running because they've taken the power from the mayor. That needs to be fixed. They're not going to accept that, though, when you try to put that forward, and they're not going to put that in there. But the mechanism itself gives you an opportunity to accomplish two things. You could go right now and figure out that we're going to submit something to the city in the timeline and get it on the ballot so that you do meet the most democratic thing, which is to get it to the most of the people to vote, not just 3,000 that are going to vote in the follow-on elections. You could do it at the November election, which should be your goal, which is to get the most people to participate in the decision, because then the people own the process. They will participate. That will make a difference. Your mechanism is that you're a charter commission until the vote has occurred, the way if you read the state's guidance. So you can continue to meet. You can continue to make your list. You can leave a report at the end. You can also make a change, a simple change, in the Charter Commission that says that if they approve it, the next Charter Commission starts the next month. Whatever you want to put in there, you can put that in the Charter Commission so you don't have to change the whole charter. And you can leave a report with them and then accomplish everything that you've studied. The other thing is it is a lengthy process. When you start to look at studying other city councils, whether they've worked or not, whether term limits have worked or not. Well, I will tell you right now that when you look at a lot of those cities that you've talked about, in the time frame for the last 20 years, this debt in Bossier City has gone from $100 million to $450 million in Bossier City over the last 21 years since four of these councilmen, or three of the councilmen were in there. Right now, your children have the highest debt per capita of any city in Louisiana. That amount of debt is what's keeping us from giving those guys pay raises. Right. Now, I'm, but, but I'm anyway, ask you, but Mr. anyway, so I know, Mr. I'm just, I'm just ask refuting you to keep, what you, keep saying. your information to the charter. May, may I stay process. below below the? Th but I'm you just got saying another that minute. So these are, ahead. but I think these are reasons to consider that you can you can truncate your process, but not stop your mission. You know, you can continue through the process and make recommendations and say, this is what we're going to leave for the, for the, and because you guys are so honorable and I'm power, powerfully excited about the fact that you're going to participate in it, but you can leave a report and chances are you're going to get put right back in the seat to complete the process and it may just be done better. And I think that uh, basically um, I, I, I would love to be able to debate you about uh, the success of the, the petition for term limits. We stopped it when we got enough signatures to pass the, to get it in, on the ballot. All That's right, why Mr. we stopped. I, I'm gonna ask I could have gotten you 5,000. I could have gotten you 7,000. All right, thank you, Mr. Crockett. I appreciate your comments very much. 
any other general members of the general public would like to um, if not I'm sure we're not going to be talked about on your show Tuesday night are we of course of course um, not. Go ahead. in response to that I would just say I don't doubt it but you could probably get all the signatures if you only tell them one side and that's my problem with it is are we looking at the pros and the cons or are we just looking at the pros well, if you'll let me answer the question no 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 i think that's going to be for i was just re I, reaffirming I what my statement yeah, because meant because that was talked about earlier right. when you make the presentation david one more comment i'm trying to get us towards adjournment but absolutely go ahead. uh just address colonel crockett if we can uh we, you have that email now i guess is that public Yes, charter at city council, so city, if maybe, city maybe if you'll address, address that email, that would, that would be good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Parks, any other comments? No, sir. Thank All you. Right. Ms. Moore, uh, Ms. Whitman, no. Mr. Jeter, and the silent Mr. Cheatham. <laughs> Mr. Jeter, Mr. Cheatham, all right. I will formally accept a motion to adjourn and we will see everybody at our next meeting. Go ahead. Somebody want to make a comment? No, never mind. Okay. okay. Our, our next meeting, which is going to be on the 12th at 11 o'clock here in the city, at the city council chambers. Motion, we adjourn. Thank you for your time tonight, Just to be sir. clear, did we have a motion and a second on that? A motion and a second to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Ms. Moorhart. We are adjourned. Thank you. Oh. Mr. Ray, thank you for your time tonight.